So this morning, I am going to show you guys my morning skincare routine. I keep it really simple. Like I keep it really to the point. First things I'm gonna do is put on my contacts. So, first thing I'm gonna do is wash my face. I'm using the Neutrogena Hydro Boost um, Hydrating Cleansing Gel. I really like this. It is very moisturizing and it can be for people that have dry skin as well as people that have oily skin. When I use this wash, my skin doesn't feel stripped of its moisture, so this is kind of my go-to when I'm washing my face at the sink. So after cleansing, I apply my La Roche Posay thermal water. This thermal water, obviously water in a can, not a requirement for a good skincare routine. I just happen to have it. It's good for sunburns, any irritation or redness, dryness on the skin. I like to tell my patients about it when they've had a chemical peel or any procedure really. Um, it's good for people that have eczema or atopic dermatitis, psoriasis, seborrheic dermatitis, those types of sensitive skin um, problems. And so, yeah, I use it in the morning and at night. So it's just, it gives it a nice, luxurious experience, you know, using water in a can. If you wanna speed up the process, you can use a little handheld fan. So after my face is done drying with the thermal water, I do like to use my Revision Youthful Lip Replenisher. This is my current favorite lip balm at the moment. It's just something about it. It does have a tacky feeling to it. If you don't like tacky kind of lip balms, this one's not for you. But I will say that it lasts like all day. Pigment corrector, I always have a pigment corrector on board. Last month I finished the Isden Melaclear, which I really, really like. I do have another bottle of that, so I'm going to start using that again. Um, but I'm currently using the Lourish Posse Pigment Clear Serum. I'm prone to dark spots, dispigmentation, like acne, like I, I get dark spots very easy. So I always make sure that I have a pigment corrector on board, whether it be my face wash or a serum. So this is the current one that I'm using. I like it, it's very lightweight, it has a nice pleasant smell. It seems to be working for me, I have no complaints about it. The skin looks pretty good. Use it all three times. Make sure to get your neck. Then I come in with my eye cream. This is the Revision, I was holding that upside down, DEJ eye cream, one of my favorites. A little goes a long way, you don't need a lot. I've noticed a difference in the texture underneath my eyes. It used to be really dry and creepy in this area and my under eye is one of my problem areas. But I have noticed a difference. So you don't need a lot, like a pea sized amount your upper and lower eyelid. Make sure you apply it gently because this area of your face is very delicate and the skin here is very thin so don't like rub aggressively. Then I come in with my Revitalash Advanced Eyelash Conditioner. This is one of my favorite eyelash serums. I actually notice a difference when I'm using this eyelash serum. I've tried Latisse I didn't really notice a difference 
and then there's the risk of periorbital fat atrophy and then periorbital hyperpigmentation with Latisse. So I don't, I don't reach for it. I have noticed lengthening of my lashes with this as well as thickening. So this is a serum that I, that works for me. I've noticed a difference. Let's apply it to your lash line. I've been using this for like two years. Then I come in with my vitamin C. This is my current vitamin C serum that I'm using. It's from La Rouge Posse. It's got um, salicylic acid in it as well. So those people that have oily skin or prone to acne, this is a good vitamin C. Um, it's a good drugstore price point because a lot of people, personally, I like the SkinCeuticals vitamin C, but it is a higher price point. This one is not as expensive, um, so it is an option. Just move a little dropper size amount. I will say that there's this like common theme of using products with a dropper and like applying it to the face, touching the face with the dropper, etc. There needs to be a PSA because the dropper in your cosmetic products or your skincare products should not touch anything but the inside of the bottle. Should not touch your skin, should not touch your hand, should not touch your makeup brushes because essentially what you're doing is you're introducing bacteria that lives on your skin, on your makeup brushes, etc., into the bottle of a closed container, which causes, you know, bacteria to grow in here and eventually you'll be reapplying bacteria to your skin and you don't want that, obviously. So make sure that when you use a product with a dropper, it doesn't touch anything but the inside of the bottle. It does not touch your hand, does not touch your face, etc. Just the inside of the bottle. So yeah, that was my PSA. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Um, so yeah, that's my vitamin C. And then I've been on a revision kick with me. I really like the IntelliShade Clear. This is a moisturizer and SPF. So I'm about to go on a hot girl walk. So of course I want to make sure I wear my SPF. This is one of my current favorites. It doesn't leave a cast. It's not greasy. It's SPF of 50. So yeah, I really like it. So you're supposed to use a third to a half a teaspoon of sunscreen, which could be two finger lengths for some people, more or less. I just like to eyeball it. So, yeah. Make sure you like bring it down your neck, your ears, the back of your neck, of course. Your chest, if your chest is exposed. Yeah, this is one of my favorite sunscreens. Gets the job done, that's for sure. So yeah, that's my AM skincare routine. I keep it short and sweet. Not too many products, not too many steps. I have my pigment corrector, my vitamin C, my moisturizer with sunscreen, my eye cream, my lash serum, and I call it a day. So, about to go on my hot girl walk. 